what lurks behind this unassuming storefront in Cleveland, Ohio. It's the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic. Learn the history of Wicca and the tale of those who brought it to the United States. See the tools of magic once used by practitioners of the arcane arts. It's the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic. Welcome back. Uh, this isn't a live episode. This is just something that I'm kind of filming on my own. And the reason why I'm filming it is because, well, let's face it, I get a lot of mail here at the museum. Sometimes it's people that want me to join their cult. Other times it's fantastic mail like this right here from Clint Marsh and Fiddler's Green. All right, let's take a look at this, right? April 29th, 2020. Dear Stephen, it was a real pleasure to see your face on our video call earlier this month. We did a live stream earlier talking about Fiddler's Green and the Quarantine Fest, which was, uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff's canceled right now, so it was a way to, like, take uh, Fiddler Green love of, uh, a love of zines and put it online. I, uh, it was a lot of fun. We participated a little bit. Okay, so anyway, let me skip to enclosed as a collection of Fiddler's Green publications for the Buckland Museum archives. An identical collection has been sent to the Museum of Witchcraft and Magic in Boscastle, Boscastle, England. And uh, funny, no, probably a big, huge, yes, everybody knows that the collection that we have on display here was very much influenced by this collection in Boscastle. Our founder, Raymond Buckland, um, he had went to visit this and he said, you know what, I should start my own museum. And he started collecting artifacts at that point. So, feels pretty good here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Clint. Okay, so, uh, Pleased to have your cooperation in making these available for viewing to scholars or other visitors on a special collections basis. You know, the thing about that is, is uh, this is all a wonderful plan and then COVID-19 happens. We had some plans for an expansion where we could actually have a library where people could come and uh, entertain, um, or not entertain, but explore our uh, special collections. Maybe we're about a year out, I hope. All right, so um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 technical stuff. Very best wishes, Clint Marsh. Thank you, Clint. I am so thrilled. This uh, He's included a breakdown here, and it pretty much goes issue by issue and special things that go along with them. And I thought it'd be kind of fun since, uh, I mean, we don't, uh, we can only have six people here at a time. Probably not going to have a lot of people going through our archives right now. But maybe I could do a little video where we kind of explore each issue. Just a little bit. I don't want to give all the mysteries away. Because, uh, I mean, what's a mystery if everybody knows it, right? It's, uh, But you don't want it to be a secret either. Because, you know, secrets... Mysteries would be a bit ambiguous. All right, so I'm gonna change like cameras and we will uh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Clint. This is wonderful. And this and start anew. All right, so check it out. Here we have essentially the beginning of our voyage and what's this the dawn treader right here this is the premiere issue and you know this because it says premiere issue up here 
and it is issue one of Fiddler's Green. Let's take a look. Volume one, number one. Are you feeling peculiar? Okay, first thing I really noticed here is this beautiful ad from Alexis Burger Designs. And if you know anything about Fiddler Green, you will see these uh, get more and more beautiful as the time goes on. So this is the first issue. This is the uh, essentially throwing down the gauntlet saying I'm going to make something incredible. Uh, the first real thing we have here is uh, the kids are right. Traditional was the magic and punk rock as if. Which seems kind of like a manifesto to me. Let's be punk, let's be uh, occultists, and let's live in a world that we create. Which, uh, you know, DIY magic. Here we have black and white defenses against the basilisk. Which, uh, probably good advice for everyone. Ah, the place of the song dream. The animal spirituality of Kenneth Graham. Not to be confused with the uh, Typhonian energies and spirituality of Kenneth Grant. This, Kenneth Graham, the writer of, uh, what, The Wind in the Willows, and of course, one of the main protagonists of that. No, I guess he was just like kind of like sitting there and he'd just show up, is the great one, Pan. And uh, I know that some people claim that they've brought Pan back lately, but I don't think Pan ever went away. Anywhere there's excitement in the world and excitement in the world and revolved around nature pan lives io pan this is really great reproduction of the photograph by our wonderful friend rick garrett who's a friend of the museum he came here last year and did a presentation on occultism and photography so overall i would say this is a pretty damn incredible issue and uh Issue one, so he starts off strong. All right, number two, continuing kind of like a classic motif here. In the pursuit of magic, isn't that what we're all looking for here? Volume one, number two, Wednesday 23, September 2015. Okay, so I will point out that it says here um, that this was published on Friday 19, September 2014. And I understand that was Clint's 40th birthday, and I think it might have been the kind of thing like when Alan Moore turned 40 and he said, I am now a magician. Maybe uh, Clint said, you know what? I am now going to create one of the greatest zines of all time. And uh, I think it took a few months for him to actually publish it for real in uh, 2015. So anyway, here we are back in the second issue. Some very beautiful illustrations. I We got this guy right here, Doctor Strange, who's probably the strangest of all the Marvel characters. And also, uh, Steve Ditko was a real head. All right, Alexis Burger Designs returns. Very, very cool. I'm going to have to check out AlexisBurger.com. Okay. Correspondences. Now, who out there remembers T.M. Maple? So we have a correspondences section here. So uh, people writing in and uh, talking about how great issue one was. Very cool. Make tea, not war. I can get behind that. And let's see here. Oh, wow, this is really special list of illustrators and I gotta say that the one thing that I really love about Fiddler's Green is the illustrations are very consistent it's um it's real like zeitgeist stuff everything that you look at looks like it's something that's made now but it doesn't look like it wasn't uh, you know like an illustration in a version of the golden bow from a hundred years ago alright so that's issue one Two, and here we have three, and I love three. Oh, I will point out, number two, the first one with the gold foil. Here we have number three. What I really love about this cover is pretty much all the covers have kind of like a grid thing going on, but this one, though there's a little bit of grid here, it breaks through because it's the green man on the cover. And I mean, the power of nature, right? Bursting through the seams. Clint classy 
I love it. This is fantastic. Some interesting mystic collage art here. Oh, okay, so Mind Power, a manifesto from uh, Mitch Horowitz. A lot of people know Mitch Horowitz. Um, uh, interesting scholar and thinker about occultism in America. His book, Occult America, I recommend a lot of people. It's, uh, I mean, you can forget about just how truly weird we are here in the United States. You know, we don't have, like, that European occult history, right? But we do, the, the, it's, I mean, America's a great frontier in a lot of ways, and, uh, one of our most unique kind of things that we have here are things like mind power. The power of positive thinking. So, uh, interesting to see that Mitch is added into this one here. It's very cool. Let's return to Pan Island. Alright. So this is issue number three. Here we have issue number four. Four. Kind of like the boxing in returns. What's this entity on the cover? This is really intense. I uh I I've always got like kind of an uneasy feeling whenever I look at this issue. So beautiful illustrations here by Adrian. Razi, uh, Poison Apple Print Shop, I believe, out of Pittsburgh. Um, if you don't know her work, go find that stuff right now. Cool ad from Mithras Candles, who I know do extraordinary candles. Let's see. England, My Lion Heart by Kenneth McCreel. Poison Apple Print Shop. All right, so learn how to how to learn a new magic word from a wishing well. Volume two, number one, a fool and his mana. We'll be soon parted, I guess. Kind of continues the. Uh, Traditional cover design here. Really beautiful. Gold foil comes back. It's the otherwise. Alright, volume two, number one. Full in his mana. Golden treasure lost and found. Now, one thing. Oh, the return of the AlexisBurger.com uh, ad. I mean, it just gets better and better with each issue, doesn't it? Little micro tunings. Um, I gotta go check out that website. It's, uh, it's a compulsion. Look, we have the return of Adrian Rossi's art. I mean, the methods of the scryer. Whoa. Anybody out there into scrying? I, uh, I know some people are extraordinarily good at it. And, uh, I know myself, and I experiment with it quite a bit, but... You know, most of the time it's just an experimentation. Another Mithras candle ad here. But, oh, lo and behold, this is the issue where the Fiddler's Green Flexi Disc shows up. I was so excited when I got this issue because I, uh, when I was a kid, I had our universe, which this was a really, 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 really cool box from National Geographic. And our universe had a, um, uh, you know, it had this really cool book in it, but then it also had a flexi disc that came with it. And the flexi disc was, uh, had this like ancient Egyptian ritual for Ra, the sun god. And, uh, I would play it. You know, my little turntable, and just, 
And it took me back in time when, uh, you know, I was hanging out there. Maybe I was a high priest and I got to tell the Pharaoh what to do. Okay, here we are at volume two, number two, Practical Nostalgia. I got a shout out to my friend Aaron who likes to make fun of me because I claim that, um, Mike, I'm not really into like nostalgia and stuff, but then he's like, well, you've been the director of two museums, one a witchcraft museum and one a pop culture museum. Uh, yeah, I think you're into it. So anyway, musings of an urban herb hunter. Written and illustrated by our friend Johnny Decker Miller, who I was just texting with earlier today. Johnny Decker Miller is an incredible artist out of uh, Chicago, and uh, that's exactly what he looks like. So, interesting article. Compendium of Witches. All right. Anathema Publishing. It says right here, quality occult books and contemporary esoterica. And looking at this, I would say this screams quality to me. Okay, so here we have an ad for the Fiddler's Green Leaflets, which I'll get into in a little bit because we uh, have a stack of those and they're really, 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 really cool. Fortune's Flora. Uh, the Veritas Gen uh, Genie Symposium. Uh, July 19th to the 21st, 2019. Very cool. Publications received. Kind of a review of other zines. You know, the one thing that I really love about, uh, Clint Marsh and, uh, the Fiddler's Green, it's, it's not just like, hey, it's my show. He's one to share. Here we have another uh, flexi disc. Let's take a look at the back here. This is a cool ad. Arga Warga Press, weird books for weird people. This looks weird. Looks really cool. All right, so. This issue was volume two, number two, and let's wrap it up on these here with number two, or uh, volume two, number three. It's in Arcadia Ego. Oh wow, this is a beautiful illustration. I mean, brings me back to the first time I read uh, Holy Blood, Holy Grail, right? If, if you know that book, you know what I'm talking about. Some really beautiful stuff going on here. An article about the Descended Masters, William Blake and the Fallen Angels. Article about releasing wood spirits, a simple question in life's work. Are there any simple questions when it comes to one's life works? I don't know, I haven't read the article yet. Maybe I will find out. Weird Walk. Volume 1, Numbers 1 and 2. Yeah, that looks cool. He sells these on a Peculiar Parish website, which is kind of his uh, distro website. Okay. Hellbore, number 1, which I just ordered from his website. Oh, very cool. Okay, and we have this right here. I'm actually gonna have to uh, listen to some of these flexies sometimes too. I uh, I have my own copies of these at home, so I will uh, jam them. All right, so that was this just kind of like a blow through of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, of the Fiddler's Green. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, and here we have the set of the pamphlets. Find out about the Riddle of the Sphinx. 
Armchair Demonology. The Place of the Song Dream. That's really wonderful. Enchantment Dismantled. The Basilisk. Our bogeys are shelves. And then what's the one? What's the armchair demonology where you go into your bad habits? Yeah, these are really wonderful. And actually, we have a plan to reprint some of the Buckland um, uh, pamphlets that he used to sell at his museum in this format. Uh, hopefully it happens um, sometime sooner than later it's uh, sometimes you have these wonderful projects and they get sidetracked so Clint if you watch this just email me and be like come on let's do it let's do it alright so here we have wandering wizard stickers these really beautiful stickers this fiddler's green sticker and then uh, this guy right here oh I think that actually came with that. So, really beautiful pieces of ephemera, and uh, thank you for sending these along, Quint. So, I guess I should probably point out that we do sell these in our gift shop. Uh, we currently have the last two issues of um, Fiddler's Green for sale here. I try to keep what I can in stock as long as I can because I think, you know, I'm just a huge supporter of what he has going on here. And also, um, you know, we do keep the pamphlets on hand and I have some of the stickers. Uh, thanks for listening to me yammer on. I, uh, I really, 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 really enjoy these and I... Hope uh, I hope you can get some enjoyment out of Fiddler's Green yourself, because these uh, I mean, all right. So we're living in a time right now where things are breaking apart. It almost seems like it could be the end of culture. And why do we have culture? We have culture so we could have shared experiences where we can enjoy certain things and find comfort in. Um, uh, just kind of like a microcosm of the world. And that's, I've really found great joy in exploring the Fiddler's Greens over the years. And uh, it's really, really an honor to have these cataloged and placed into our archives for future scholars, esotericists, and just straight up, you know, people that like this kind of thing to be able to enjoy for the future. So. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for being the kind of person that supports. And, uh, I don't know. Not really sure what we're going to be doing in the future. I might cut out the live streams for a bit because we're open right now. Uh, at least until the second spike comes and screws everything up again. But, uh, like I said, we're open right now. And the idea is, uh... Um, I mean, I keep it very minimal. Um, but just by being open and doing my song da dance every day, it's not always so easy for me to, uh, to do those things like live streams and etc. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Take care. Peace out.